Alright guys, today I've got a uh, fun little video for you here. This is going to be on my NVIDIA Tegra Note 7. Um, this is a great device. I absolutely really, really, really like this device. Um, just the uh, performance and uh, features on it are very, very nice. You guys have seen all my reviews and videos on this thing, I'm sure. If you haven't, definitely go check them out. i got a whole ton on this uh, Tegra Note 7 from NVIDIA. Alright. So, that being said, we're going to show you guys how to install a custom kernel on this device. And we're going to talk a little bit about the kernel as we go through the install. So, basically, um, you got to download some files. So, I'll show you where they're at. Uh, and I'll give you links to this uh, in my video description. They're here on XDA. And um, this is a kernel that's built by a guy named Shaky156. And here's basically some of the things he's got. So he has four main cores, overclocked to 1.2 gigahertz. Um, he did some uh, low voltage support, did some GPU stuff, uh, SD card read write, CP boost upon touch disable, um, RAM volt lowered, a whole bunch of different schedulers, uh, and so on. You can read it on here. It's very, very cool. Uh, basically, you're just going to download these two files. You're going to download the actual custom kernel, and then I'd recommend also downloading the stock kernel in case you ever want to restore to it. Now, I have gone ahead and already downloaded both of these in uh, ES File Browser, and this is basically going to allow you to overclock your CPU, GPU, all that kind of cool stuff that comes with custom kernels. Alright, so I've downloaded mine. Should be in Downloads, and there we go. There's the kernel and there's stock. So I have both of them right there listed. That's what you're going to need. Now, the prerequisites of installing a custom kernel are you have to have, uh, one, an unlocked bootloader. Um, two, you have to have a custom recovery. And actually, Shaky156 is also the guy who's ported over uh, Twerp recovery for this device and got it all working for us. So thank you, Shaky, for that. Um, and that's what I'll be using to flash this kernel over and get it booting. So. To do that, let's go ahead and uh, go into custom recovery. So the way I like to use to get into custom recovery, just to make it easy, is I use this thing called Quick Boot. And this does require root access, so if you have a custom recovery, you probably have root access. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about at this point, with root access, unlocking bootloaders, all that kind of stuff, watch my YouTube playlist because it does cover all that and it'll get you up to speed. Alright, so to reboot into recovery, just come over here and click recovery. Eh, pretty simple. It normally will ask for root access, but it's not going to because um, I've already used it before to reboot into recovery. Um, and that's it. This will reboot you into recovery. If Well, it will reboot you into stock recovery if you have that installed or custom recovery if you have that installed. So I do have TeamWin. Now, I think this has been fixed in the latest version of Twerp where you don't have to flip your uh, device around. Um, but I think it's still a little offset. As soon as we get a fully working right way facing uh, Twerp, I'll probably put that in my super tool. You guys have seen that video of all those cool features you can do with my tool. All right, so we're going to install this. To install a kernel, you don't wipe anything. You don't have to wipe nothing. So just go straight to installs. And actually, I'm right in downloads already. So I'm just going to click on the kernel, shaky156 kernel zip. Make sure it's listed. It is. And go ahead and flash it. So there you go. That is it. That just installed a custom kernel. We can go ahead and do the reboot, flip the device back around, and uh, this should have our new custom kernel. So I'm going to go ahead and run a quadrant on it just to see what kind of scores we're getting um, with Shaky's new custom kernel. I'll probably run this thing for a little while. Oh, now you can see it actually changed your boot animation as well. We have the standard Android boot animation. So that's interesting. Um, I'm assuming that with that setup, then we could probably easily use some kind of boot animation flasher application or put a, a, a different boot animation that you guys might like into, uh, I think it's System Media or something like that, and you'll have a different boot animation. So that's pretty cool. I uh, wasn't really expecting that, but interesting. So we're just going to go ahead and go into Quadrant. And I like just to run these, these are kind of fun, a little bench test and uh, see how this graphics and everything performs with this new kernel. So everything's pretty quick so far. We're getting uh, 60 frames per second consistently. So far 65 right there. 
Um, yeah, very, very smooth and fast graphics. Yeah, pretty much 58 I saw there for a second. And very, very nice. Let's go ahead and see what we get for 3D. Again, 60 frames per second down there in the bottom. Uh, very cool. Let's see what our score is on this thing. Again, here's some more 3D, 57, 64. Yeah, it's 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 looking nice. I'm definitely liking uh, the scores I'm seeing so far. Let's go ahead and check it out. Ooh, yeah, that, I think that's a huge improvement from stock, if I remember right. We have uh, 16,881 is our quadrant score. You can see it is huge on the top right there. Very very cool. Um, I'm definitely digging it. I want to check it out hopefully and see how this thing runs um, long term here. Hopefully it'll be very very nice. Let me go ahead and download one more application really quick. All right, so I just went ahead really quick and downloaded this. It's called Set CPU. Um, continue recommends custom setup. So we're just going to check this out really quick. This is what um, Shaky re recommends for adjusting your CPU and all that kind of stuff. So you can see right here at the top we have CPU readings, and there is the uh, would be 2.1 gigahertz. Well, it's all this is all done in megahertz it looks like um, so very very cool you can see you can adjust and uh, change it Whoop, let me get back on I'm moving the whole screen here there we go and I mean you can change in here you can add profiles you can adjust governors um, a bunch of CPU information and about the application so this is what he would recommend to use if you're going to go ahead and adjust your CPU. I think this is, let me see, I feel like this is GPU. Is that right? No, that can't be right. It's got to be CPU also. Maybe you got min max here, I think. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So max is this and min is that. So you could actually technically bring your min down to very, very low. Um, I would probably wouldn't go below right about there, about 324. Um, very, very nice. I like it. Very cool, and that's you can see how you can adjust that stuff. You can max out so it always runs uh, max CPU, but you're going to drain your battery very quick if you do that. Um, but there you go, guys. That is the custom kernel. Um, I definitely would say recommend checking it out for you on your device. This, it does work with KitKat. That is what I'm running. Um, we'll just show you that also really quick. Right there, Android 4.4.2. Um, that's what it's set up for. So check it out on your device if you like it. Uh, give Shaky a big thumbs up. If you don't, no big deal. Flash the stock uh, kernel that he uh, supplies and you'll be back and running. If you have any major issues, you can always use my super tool and flash stock that way also. There you go. I hope you guys like this little video here on Shaky's kernel. Big props to him. Thank you very much. Very cool. I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Root Junkie out. Yeah.